All right, so let's do some example. Um, talk about the um, process for analyzing a doubly reinforced section, which means we have um, compression reinforcement as well as tensile reinforcement, so top and bottom. And then we'll do an example. So let's see. We're going to make our assumption that our tensile reinforcement has yielded. So a strain in my tensile reinforcement is greater than or equal to the yield strain and the stress is equal to the yield stress. This is just looking at that chart, flow chart that we just had. Select a value for your neutral axis depth. C. Um, start as a guess. Start between D over four based on that guess. Calculate um, A and then your strain in your compression reinforcement and resulting stress in your compression reinforcement force in your compression steel, your stress or your force in your compression or your compression force in your concrete and T. T stays constant. So long as your as your tension reinforcement has yielded. The only thing that's going to change our is your C and then your A associated with it, your strain in your compression reinforcement, the stress in your compression reinforcement, the force in your compression reinforcement, then the force in your concrete in compression. So those are gonna change. So I'm going to check equilibrium Right. That's my C sub C plus C sub S equals T. My force and my compression reinforcement, the compression force of my concrete, and are going the sum of those have to equal the tensile force in my tension reinforcement.
if t is greater than c sub c plus c sub s, that means I need to decrease the stress in my in both my steel compression steel and my compression concrete. I do that by making the area over which that stress happens, that 0.85F prime C, smaller. So that means making your A smaller, your depth of your stress block smaller. Oh wait, the other way around. If I, if I have, if my tension force is greater, I need to increase my compression force and increase. I do that by increasing C. Right? If I don't have enough compression force, I have to increase the area over which that stress happens. So I need to increase A, which in turn increases C. Increasing C um, might have an effect on my stress in my compression steel. Might not might actually decrease it, but most of my compression force is coming from my concrete, so. Right. Alternatively, if I have, if I say that I have too much compression force, then I need to decrease the area in compression. So I need to decrease C. Once I do that, Return to step. Three. That was terrible. Return to step three. I have a new C. I'm going to recalculate the A associated with it, which will have an effect on the stress, or I'm sorry, the strain in my compression steel, the stress of my ear. Compression steel, the force in my compression steel, and then the force in my concrete, and my tension, which probably won't change. It shouldn't change. Um, I'm going to stop when the difference. and C sub C plus C sub S is less than This is just an iterative process. I'm writing out what, what was back here. Alternatively, you could solve a quadratic equation. Um, once I have determined the depth of my stress block, I'm going to go back and verify my assumption. If that's wrong, I gotta start all over again. I gotta make sure 
that my compression steel has yielded. If it hasn't yielded, now I got another little factor in there to take care of. If you want to figure out how to solve that, look at the problem that we did on the Zoom call last week. And once everything, okay, I've, saw, I've satisfied equilibrium, I've satisfied my strain profile, I've verified my assumption, everything's good. Now I can calculate. BMM. Right. This means, right, I have Strain profile that satisfies equilibrium. linear that satisfied equilibrium is c sub c plus c sub s equals t is linear so that I can use use similar triangles to calculate Of s and e sub s prime. And All the tools in my toolbox for reinforced concrete flexural design are my equilibrium, the forces in my compression side are equal to the forces in my tension side. Those forces are either just the concrete or there's a little bit of concrete and steel in compression and then the only thing in tension is your tensile reinforcement. My string profile, I assumed it's linear. This is going back to the very beginning of all this. Um, so I can use similar tri triangles to calculate the strain in both my tension and compression reinforcement. And I've made this assumption that my steel has yielded, my tensile steel has yielded. If it has not, I need to go back and make sure that I have a strain profile that accounts for it and still satisfies equilibrium. So these are kind of all the big concepts that work together. 
if you understand what this slide is talking about, you're good to go. If you don't, let me know. What else do we have? P factor. So I'm still talking about flexural moment capacity, right? So page 391. where I start talking about my fee factor. Strength reduction factor for flexural concrete members in connection. I am still talking about moment. As a result, I'm still following this 0.65 to 0.9 in accordance with 21.2.2. Twenty one point two point two gives me this table where I have to base my fee factor on the strain in the far the most extreme tensile reinforcement, ET. Doesn't matter that I just threw compression reinforcement in there. I still base my fee factor on whether or not I'm tension controlled, compression controlled, or in the middle. That is why we talked about adding reinforcement, compression reinforcement. Um, one reason is to make it tension controlled. So fee factor. Same as singly reinforced. Based on on E T strain and extreme. So the fee factor doesn't change. The way I calculate it doesn't change if I add in compression reinforcement or not. AS min. Go to page 135. Sorry. Minimum flexural reinforcement. This doesn't, this isn't talking about AS prime, it's talking about AS min. Right? This doesn't change if I have compression reinforcement. A minimum area Flexural reinforcement, AS min, shall be provided every section where tension reinforcement is required by analysis. Doesn't mention anything about the compression.
only count your tensile reinforcement for this. Not your compression reinforcement on the top, your tension reinforcement on the bottom. Assuming positive bending. Ties. So you have these longitudinal bars of compression reinforcement, right? The AS prime. That's your compression reinforcement. You're applying a force to it. What happens if you have something long and skinny and you apply a compressive force to it. You've all taken steel, most of you. Should have taken steel. You have something long and skinny, you apply compression to it. don't change, right? Let's just do a little fun thought process here, right? Your slenderness ratio. That's how you define if something's gonna buckle. More slender, more likely to buckle. If R doesn't change, because you're not gonna change what longitudinal bars you put in there, I hope you're all screaming. Decrease L. Or your unbraced length. That is what ties do. Ties or stirrups That's a stirrup It's a single dude or 
stirrups. Basically, like provide bracing, right? You know, decrease that length. Dang. And your likelihood of your compression steel. Actually, stirrups might be the generic name of it, but anyway. Yeah, okay. So, that's just a summary of our fee factor, our minimum tensing reinforcement. Neither of those change if we add compression steel. And why we would add ties, it's to make sure that our compression reinforcement doesn't buckle. Plus, we might need them again anyway. So we just did this. Oh, I don't want it. Or maybe I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. So we did this example, but now we're going to take into account the effect of the compression steel. So let's see. What were my steps? because they're number nines, so six square inches. AS prime is three number nines, so three times one, three square inches.
I said anywhere from D over 4 to D over 3. So D over 4, 16.8 inches divided by 4, 4.2. Three is sixteen point eight divided by three, five point six inches. I'm going to try Try five inches. Let's see. Let's see, equal to five inches. I'm going to go back. So ES prime, I got an equation for it right here, ES prime equal to ECU over C times C minus D prime. So 0 0.003 over 5 inches times 5 inches minus D prime 2.5 inches. Stress. This, that's my strain in my compression steel. My stress in my compression steel is just that times the elastic modulus. Remember, this is my compression steel, not my reinforcing steel. Yield stress sixty KSI. Just had to make sure I didn't go above my yield stress, is all. This is my ten my compression reinforcement. It's okay that it's not yielding. 
If it was yielding, I just need to make sure and cap it at the yield stress is all. If I got like 63.5, I would just have to cap that at 60. Okay, what else do I need to do? C sub S equals AS prime FS prime minus 0 0.85 F prime C. So my area of compression is 3 square inches times 43.5 KSI minus 0 0.85 times 4 KSI, 4,000 PSI. the force in my compression reinforcement. Now the force in my concrete, 0 0.85 F prime C A B or Say one C B. I'm just being lazy and I guess I could calculate A. Right? A equals beta one C zero point eight five times five inches. Concrete force, 0 0.85 F prime C A B, because this is a rectangle. If it wasn't a rectangle, that wouldn't be true. So, let's see, 0 0.85 times F prime C, which is 4 KSI. Uh, 4.25. Inches. My width is twelve inches. Point eight five times four times four point two five times twelve. One hundred and seventy three point. ASFY, my area of my tensile reinforcement, and I'm assuming it's yielded, so it's my yield stress. Area of tensile reinforcement, 16.8 inches squared, 60 KSI. good 16.8 that is totally wrong that is the d i was like that is a weird number six squared inches right as six squared inches it's like that's really off six times 60 360 kips oh good because i was like they're really far apart so
going to check equilibrium. C sub C plus C sub S. I got 173.4 kips plus 120.3 kips. Tension, 360 kips. So get my difference. If I'm, if I'm assuming my tension is the right one, right? My percent difference. Eighteen percent different. My tension force is too well. My compression force is too low compared to my tension force. T is greater than C sub C plus C sub S. How do I? What do I do now? increase my C because I need more of my concrete in compression. Now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pause because what I would what I'm gonna have you guys do on homework is do these iterations but you can do them in Excel if you would like because doing them by hand gets super old. So increase C, you can iterate, okay? Now what you want to do instead of, um, what you can do, I mean you could do it all by hand if you really like, you can make a little Excel spreadsheet. You guys can screenshot this, but I'm not going to send it to you. Um, but you can see I started with a C of 5 inches, and I got a difference of about 18.4. So I'm going to increase my C. Maybe I could make this a little bit bigger. <clears throat> I'm going to increase my C because my T is too big. <coughs> if I increase it to 6 inches, now my difference is only 2.7%. So I could stop right there. <clears throat> Pardon me. If I want to get down to 0% difference, 6.19 is the actual answer. Um, within 5%, you get C can be anywhere from 5.84 um, to or 5, 5.5, sorry, to 6.54. Maybe I could add um, right C sub C plus C sub S equals that plus that. Oops. You can see how off you are. You want to get exactly right. C of 6.19 inches gives you the exact right answer. Also, while you're doing this, you could look at your strain in your tension steel and make sure that you have yielded, right? 0 0.00471.
is pretty good. Also, especially my actual answer, 6.19, if I get down to 0% difference, 0 0.005 for my strain and my, oh, that's my strain, my still, never mind. <laughs> That'll definitely mean that I'm tension controlled, but I forgot that this has two layers, so it wouldn't, no, this could actually work too. Um, but yeah, so I could do that while I'm doing it instead of using the quadratic formula to solve all this stuff. Um, I can make a little Excel spreadsheet and just change all my numbers. So that's what I'm going to have you guys do for homework is figure this out. Do a little Excel. Everybody loves Excel. So that's my iterations. If you want to do it yourself, like I said, you can take a screenshot right now. I'm not going to send this to you because I want you guys to make it yourself. Um, so let's see. Um, if you iterate. to zero percent difference, you get a C of 6.19 inches. And let's see, my strain, right? There's my strain in my um, compression steel stress related to it. See, it's still, it hasn't yielded. It's 51.8. My strain in my tensile steel at the centroid definitely has yielded. So 60, there's my T and C sub C plus C sub S. 6.19. So, hey, kind of like that. Anyway, so Really, I could just do an Excel thing right now, right? Verify E sub S. Well, I actually already did that. Greater than or equal to E sub Y. E sub S. Right. Y, which is 0 0.00207, that's 60 KSI steel. So I'm just going to say check. And um, calculate my nominal capacity. MN is Equation. Did I redo it? Yeah. Right? C sub C. This one right here. C sub C times D minus A over 2 plus C sub S. I'm just taking my moment about T. That's what I did. times D minus 
a over 2 plus c sub s times d minus d prime. I'm going to go in and just do that. And then kips, kip uh, inches, I guess. Let's see, c sub c. which is 16.8 inches minus a over 2 plus c sub s times d This is for my actual right answer. Aye, aye, aye. Where I iterated to the to the end. Just gonna make that. Oh no. That's not how I to do. Right, that's the one I'm looking at. Okay. Right. Let's see. That's my nominal capacity. Let's get it in feet. So I'm just going to divide that by 12. And I have to do my feet factor. So what do I do for my fee factor? Well, I can use what I did over here, right? Now, what I really need to do is calculate ET. Um, where, let's see, ET is equal to ECU, D sub, let's see. T minus C over C. Go back and look that up if you know what I'm doing. That's the strain in my extreme tensile steel. So let's see. I can calculate it similar to that, but for completeness, right? Equals ECU times D sub T, which is not available yet. Um, let's see. D T in inches, I believe. If we go back. is 17 and a half inches, right? It's right here. That's the depth from my extreme compression fiber to my extreme tensile reinforcement. It's just tough. I want to make sure that I'm tension controlled, right? So 17.5 inches. Let's redo this calculation here. Uh, B9 minus C over C. Sure. Copy that 
that down. So this, if I have, and we go all the way back. So if I have a depth of my neutral axis, 6.19 inches, I get the force in my, the compression force in my concrete is equal plus the compression force in my compression steel is essentially equal to the tension force in my tensile steel i'm in equilibrium i'm in equilibrium i have verified that the strain at the centroid of my tension steel is greater than 0.02 00207, which is the strain associated with yield for 60 KSI steel. So I verified my assumption that I could use FY in calculating my tensile reinforcement um, force. Now, because that's 0.0514, and the difference between DT and DS, like it since this is already greater than 0.005. This is going to be even more. ET is 0 0.00548. That is the strain in my extreme tensile reinforcement. I need that to calculate phi. Zero point zero zero five four eight. If I go back to my fee factor, I just have to be like three ninety three or something like that. Right. Tension controlled. As long as my strain and my extreme tensile reinforcement is greater than the yield strain associated with that, plus 0.003, so greater than 0.005, basically, I can use a fee of 0.9. I'm assuming I have, well, yeah, I have ties, so 0.9 doesn't matter, actually, in this case. Therefore, phi equals 0 0.9. Finally... get to calculate VMN. VMN, 0 0.9 times whatever, 426, 427 kips, something like that. Kip feet, sorry. Or you can just do it in the Excel. But. 300. You can add some if statements in there if you want to make this super um, um, right. So let's see. Right, your fee factor, you can make some if statements if you want to make this reusable. Um, if I had see 5.85 as a C. My ET is 0 0.00597. It goes, you know, just go 0 0.9. So I can use 0 0.9. Three hundred eighty 
before if I had a C. So let me see. Is it? Is it? I don't know. Why are you being so slow? Yes, this dude. Alright, so if this was what, six point. So my fee basically, or my, look, 367 kip feet, or if. The value was 5% the other way. So if I had a C of 6.54, still, my ET is still 0 .5, 0 0.05, so that's valid, 400. So you have a range of about, what, 30 kip feet. Um, so you can stop at 5%, but if you really want to go down, especially if you're just doing Excel, um, Anyway, so there's that. So I got 384 kip feet. So that's an example using compression reinforcement. What I want to do now, this was example three. If I go back to when, so if I go back the example without taking into account the compression reinforcement. This was the awful one that we did the other day. Um, uh oh, my steel doesn't yield, so that's not good. And as a result, my VMN was 243 kip feet. Two hundred forty-three kip feet. This was the example without taking into account compression reinforcement. If I took my compression reinforcement into account, look at what happened. My steel decided to yield, and I increased. Go back and look at it, but without taking into compression reinforcement into account. Um, tensile steel didn't yield. Steel didn't yield. Um, I couldn't use my lovely 0.9. Um, I had to use 0.65 because it was compression controlled. So instead of 0.9, I had to multiply by 0.65 for my fee. So my fee MN was super low. Uh, what was the C for that? Okay, I'll give you a minute to write that down. But... Depth to 
my steel, I think it was like 10.1 inches. to our neutral axis was 10.1 inches versus 6.19. My tension steel didn't yield um, and I had a super reduced capacity. So that goes right into the reasons of why we talked about adding compression reinforcement. M increase the ductility, make it more likely to yield. Change your C by like half. 60, you know, decrease it by like 40 percent. Um, so that is how you can solve for um, incorporating compression reinforcement. Um, in real life, you could maybe not account for compression reinforcement, and then if you get a bad answer like we had before, you know, oh no, it's not yielding. I'm in a compression controlled environment. I have a too small of a fee, MN, you know, too small of a design capacity. Um, then go back and redo it, having that steel play a part, the compression steel play a part. And that is compression reinforcement. All right. Have a good one.